Well, El Nino is actually a warm phase event where we typically see above average sea surface temperatures down over the central and eastern equatorial Pacific. Well, hurricanes need that warmer ocean temperature to actually feed themselves and grow. And so when you have that warmer water down over the eastern Pacific in an El Nino year, you tend to see an increase in activity over the eastern Pacific. Meanwhile, over on the Atlantic side, with the jet stream configuration, you tend to have stronger winds that work their way up through the atmosphere, thus decreasing the amount of hurricane activity in the Atlantic. Well, during an El Nino event, we actually see our jet stream, that river of wind aloft that helps to carry our storm systems, sag just a little farther south. It sets itself up over the Gulf Coast states and North Florida. With our jet stream configured over the southern U.S., we have a tap of Gulf moisture and tend to run storm systems across the Gulf Coast and northern Florida, thus increasing the chances that they will see severe weather in an El Nino year. The jet stream itself is really important when it comes to severe weather because we have that wind that we really need to help grow our thunderstorms, not to mention the moisture coming into this particular jet stream. And with it positioned across the southeast and the Gulf Coast states, we tend to see a higher concentration of severe thunderstorms, including tornadic activity in places like Dixie Alley and down toward North Florida. El Nino years tend to see a little more destructive flood events. We're talking heavy rainfall in places like the southwest U.S. and even over portions of the southeast. Not quite as intense, but we're talking about the potential for some heavy rain events and the possibility of flooding.